Welcome in everybody to the SIUE Coaches Show here on CCIN. We're coming at you again from the women's locker room here at SIUE. We're going to talk some basketball, but we're also going to talk some baseball here on this week's show. We'll be joined by Amanda Levins, the head women's coach here, Lennox Forster, our head men's coach, and baseball head coach Gary Collins. That's all coming up right here on the SIUE Coaches Show. We'll get right into it. Head coach Gary Collins, the baseball coach here at SIUE, is our first guest. Coach, in your 33rd year now as the head coach here at SIUE, does it ever get routine? No, it's it's always new. Every year is a new year, so it's it's you know always exciting getting started. And they always say when you come to the ballpark, you're going to see something you haven't seen before. Have you found that to be the case? I, there's always something that happens during a season that I've never seen before. Then I scratch my head and and uh, ask several others, you know, hey, have you ever seen that happen? And no. So yeah, it's you know you're always looking for something new. And 33 years as a head coach, but you were here before that as a student athlete at SIUE, playing basketball and playing baseball here. Uh, how exciting is it for you to see the change that the university is going through? Well, that's kind of a that's an interesting question. It, it's it is exciting and and it's quite fascinating to look back and think of how far this university has come. Uh, the process of going through it, though, it took not just 33 years, but you know, I started here in school in 1967, so it's kind of evolved. And you know, when I look at the big picture and, and where we're at now from where we were, it's pretty incredible. When the move was announced and when they decided they were going to Division One, I, I know from past conversations that you, for one, were all in, and, and it was one of those cases where. You wanted to go right for it with the baseball program. Yeah, I did. I, I thought it was a good move for the university. I thought we should should have done that years ago. We actually did do that years ago, and it, it all fell apart at the last second back in 1984 and 5. So, uh, yeah, I was for it. I think it's good. It, it, it's look at what it, what's happened since we've done it. You know, it, there's proof. And do you feel like uh, the university is is doing it the right way? Absolutely. Yeah. It, did you know I, that was a concern? You know, are we going to get the backing? Are we going to get the support, uh, financial support, support from the administration, uh, the other facets of campus? All that has come together, and it's just been uh, nothing but positive. Let's talk about your schedule here this year, which uh, opens up this coming weekend. Uh, you've got a pretty good schedule, and in fact, a schedule that you've called fair and, and maybe one of the best that you've had since the transition period started with, with quite a few home games this year. Well, there's no question it's a it's the first decent schedule we've had since we went into the transition. I mean, that that's there's no debating that. It, it's a good schedule and and it's it's the kind of schedule we'll have probably every year from now on. A uh, couple early trips, you know, to go south, get the season started and uh, then maybe bring some people in and and uh, start a conference schedule and have half of them at home. The last couple of years, it's been almost two-thirds of your games on the road. People don't understand maybe what kind of wear that is for the student athletes. Yeah, our, our kids have weathered it really well. And I, you know, you're always leery when you, when you start and you think, man, I got to play 48 games on the road every weekend. We're going somewhere. What's it going to do to their academics? Um, you know, what's it going to do to them? Just wear them down. Uh, they, they, did a good job. They really did. And I didn't hear any complaints. Uh, they knew what they were getting into and they got through it. And now hopefully we'll reap some of the benefits. Speaks a lot to the kind of kids you have in the program. Oh, absolutely. I, you know, it would have been an easy time to whine and complain and moan about, you know, this and that. And um, see a lot of guys pack up and leave because, you know, it was too tough for them. We didn't have that. So it's a, it's a tribute to the players. Speaking of the schedule, you've got uh, eight of the nine other OVC opponents on the schedule this year, either playing at their place or coming here to Simmons Cooper Complex. Uh, you've had a chance to play quite a few of the OVC schools over the past few years. Yeah, we've we've seen all of them, but Jacksonville State actually. Uh, that's the only school we haven't played, and we have them on the schedule this year. So we've got a pretty good idea of what we're getting into and what we have to do to get to the level of competing in the conference. Uh, I think we'll see some of that this year. Uh, you know, I think we're going to prove that we can play in this conference. And, and you've told me in the past you feel like uh, even outside of the play on the field that 
SIUE and the OVC, that's a pretty good fit. I think it's a great fit. You know, those are all state schools. They're all about our size. Uh, in fact, we're the second largest school in the OVC. I've seen all the facilities except Jacksonville State's uh, as far as baseball, and we compare not just favorably. We, we have better facilities than most of them, and, and we keep improving them. Let's talk about some of those improvements to Simmons Cooper Complex. You've got uh, clubhouse improvements, which of course uh, most fans won't get the chance to see. But the biggest thing that fans will notice is artificial turf, AstroTurf this year on the infield. Yeah, I can't wait for them to get it down. Uh, you know, we were hoping that it would be done before the season started, but th th right now they're about two thirds of the way finished with it. And we think in two more weeks, maybe it'll be done. The clubhouse, we should be able to move into that, that building next week. Uh, it's 99% finished, and both of those additions uh, are going to help us just 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 with our presence. You know, obviously it'll help us recruiting, but uh, it'll help us with our practices and, our, and just feeling good about ourselves. Big change in NCAA baseball this year overall. New bats, uh, and, and what you've told me, and what I, when talking to Tony Stecklin, uh, is they perform a little closer to wood bats. I know you liked the wood bats when uh, SIUE played in the GLVC, but this is a little more uh, more true baseball. You think? It's it's much better than what it has been. Uh, two years ago, it was ridiculous. Last year, it was still bad. These bats are better, uh, fairer, I should say, and and bring a more balance back to the game. Uh, pitching will be a, uh, pitchers will be able to pitch and get guys out with good pitches. There are not going to be as many home runs, uh, but yet the ball will jump if they hit it, and uh, it, you know it's just it just makes a better better game. You like the change though in the direction it's going. I like the change. I do. I, I would have liked to have seen us go to wood, but that's not going to happen in the NCA. At least I don't think it's going to. Uh, so this is a, a really good step in the right direction of making it a fairer game. Coach, certainly appreciate the time. Look forward to uh, spending some more time this season. Thanks for joining us on the Coach's Show. Well, Joe, look forward to seeing you this season. Thanks. That's head coach Gary Collins with us here on the SIUE Coaches Show. There is more to come. Lots of basketball up next on the SIUE Coaches Show. Back on the SIUE Coaches Show, we're joined now by head women's coach Amanda Levins. Coach, uh, a nice little stretch right here uh, for you as you come down the stretch. Uh, a lot of games concentrated towards the end of the schedule, and you and I have talked about that. This is not something that's just come up. This is how you planned it. You wanted there to be a lot of games coming down the stretch here. Absolutely, and we want our team to get used to playing into March and you know through our spring break here through our academic calendar because that's when we'll, we would be in a postseason tournament. So I want our team to learn to expect to play that late in the spring. And you've got that postseason tournament and we've talked on this show about that a little bit or, or it feels like a postseason tournament. You've got an end of the year tournament at Florida Gulf Coast to really get that tournament feel to wrap up the year. Yeah, and our players learning to play in back to back to back games and that's what they're going to have to do to win, you know, the uh, an Ohio Valley Conference tournament in a couple years when we were able to play in that and I think it's a great experience for them to learn to to play that with that quick of a turnaround and that little preparation and um, I think as our team gets more experience they learn to adjust quickly and be able to watch a little bit of film and just have a few direct um, points to really focus on and go out and execute a game plan. Frankly a regular season you're going to have to play some back to back. You've got a rescheduled game. Uh, Southeast Missouri State will come in at the beginning of next week thanks to that snow day uh, a week and a half ago or so. So you're going to have to adjust on the fly a little bit. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, we're happy to get the game in, you know, playing another future conference member that we'll see next year two times. So um, the quick turnaround to play Tennessee Tech on Tuesday is is a great experience for our team to go to the Florida Gulf Coast tournament because we haven't had much back-to-back -back experience with our team. So again, learning to adjust quickly, turn around and play a completely different opponent with a completely different g game plan, you know, I think it'll help our team grow. And at this point in the season, uh, you feel like I'm sure that you've seen a lot of what teams are going to throw at you and, and, and you can maybe adjust a little quicker than maybe you could early in the year? For sure. And our players, you know, um, the majority of them now having played two years in our system, they've kind of seen all looks and just watching them grow this year and be able to adjust and execute against different defenses and offenses, you know, on both ends of the floor has been, has been really exciting for us. This time of year, uh, not only with SIUE, but all around women's college basketball, you see the pink zones games and you see 
the teams wearing the pink uniforms and all the fans in the stands wearing pink. Earlier this week here at SIUE, you had the pink zone game against IPFW. Tell me a little bit about uh, what that means, uh, not only uh, for you, but for, for college basketball, for women's college basketball, to be able to be involved in such a good cause. Well, you know, with breast cancer, it's, it's a lot about early detection and anything that we can do to get the word out, you know, to our players, to anyone that attends the game, to people that, that work the games, I think is extremely important. And then just with our program, it, it hits very close to home as we've had a player lose her mother in a battle against breast cancer since we've been coaching here. So um, it, yesterday was an emotional game for, for Kate Afferty and you know, all the players closest to her who knew her mom. Um, but it's, it's hopefully a chance that it will save somebody else down the road because of the awareness that this buzz creates in women's basketball. And you have a big win to go along with it. It turned out to be a nice night overall. Yeah, the team played fantastic on both ends of the floor and just really went out and did a fantastic job. Amanda Levin's with us here on the Coaches Show. Uh, looking forward to next year, obviously, as we get wrapping up here in 2010, 2011. Uh, what kind of things do you look forward to next year? Obviously, you've got the Ohio Valley Conference schedule and getting some players back as well. Yeah, you know, we'll lose Sydney Stahlberg and Whitney Champlin. Both are, play a huge role on our team, um, but the experience that our young players have gained this year is invaluable. Um, the last two years, I feel like each year our talent level has gotten better. We've gotten deeper, but the way we started the season hasn't been the way I would have liked. Um, we've been inconsistent both years, and I think it's a matter of being consistent every day in practice, you know, and that starts the day the season ends. You know, they got to get in the weight room, they got to work hard, they got to come back in top notch physical condition, have a great preseason, and then when we go and it's time to play, all these players have all this game experience. It's time to put it to use, and we don't waste any opportunities early on in the year. As we talk right now, seven wins at home this season, uh, above 500, and you have a chance, obviously, to finish above 500. Was that a stated goal, or has that become a goal? I know that you've always said you want to defend your home well. Yeah, you know, uh, as a coach, you want to win every game. And early on in the season, I never wanted to think we're going to win this many games or finish with this type of record. But after we got, you know, to the end of December, looking at our record, pretty frustrated, we talked to the team and said, "Look, we need to get to this point at least by the end of the season." And I think, from what we talked about that day, we're on the right track to do that. It's important for us to finish strong and continue to play well in order to do that. But you know, finishing 500 is a realistic goal. We would have to win out to do it. Um, but that's definitely not impossible. It'll be difficult, but we love challenges. When you get a chance to talk with coaches that come in here, and, and specifically coaches from programs outside of the conference, outside of the OVC, so maybe they haven't been here and, and they may not be here for a couple of years, what kind of perception do they have of SIUE and, and what do they take away from the game here? Well, they come into the arena and they're very complimentary. You know, people that saw it before the renovation and post renovation are just wowed by, by what they've seen and um, just the changes that have gone on here. And then with our team, people that are familiar with the early years that we were here and up until now, they're like, you know, very complimentary of the way the team plays and how they compete and just the, the steps that we're taking in the right direction. And are you getting to that point where uh, coaches and teams are like, man, I don't want to go back to SIUE. That's a tough <laughs> place to play. Uh, if they do, they don't, they don't really tell us that. I think that kind of gives us an advantage to know if they're, they're worried about us. But, you know, we go into every game, we respect everybody and just go out and try to execute our game plan and control what we can control. And quite frankly, you're really starting to get those kind of games here, though. And the IPFW game uh, earlier this week is a perfect example. Here's a team that had won 17 games already. Your girls hold serve and play so well in that game. They did, and you know they knew they had to play well. IPFW is a great team. They had been playing extremely well lately, and our team just, I thought that was our best mental game of the year in terms of their focus and execution of the game plan for two halves. Um, We'd really been a slow starting team, but I think we came out out of the gates really strong and we just kept it going and never wavered. Certainly it's been a lot of fun this year to, to cover you and, and to have our chats here on the uh, Coach's Show. And so I uh, certainly appreciate the time uh, this episode and all year long, Coach. Thank you. That's Cougar Head Coach Amanda Levins with us here on the SIUE Coach's Show. Stay right there. We're back for more right after this on TCIN. We continue the basketball theme here on the SIUE Coaches Show. Head men's coach Liz Forrester with us now. Coach, uh, you're wrapping up the season, just a few games left here uh, in mm -hmm. 2011. Uh, when you get a chance to look back, uh, and I'm sure obviously you haven't done it yet, but uh, aside from just wanting uh, some more wins or liking some more wins, how's the season gone in your opinion to this point? You know, uh, not too bad. I, I thought um, 
from a team standpoint, I thought we've gotten better. You know, gotten better in some areas. I, you know, still uh, we could have done better, especially when I look back defensively. But I, I think from an offensive standpoint, our guys have gotten way better in, in, in the fact of how they play unselfishly. Um, I remember the start of the year. You know, we were taking bad shots, uh, turnovers, uh, so forth, so on. The execution was poor. I think I thought that as we went along with the season. You know, I thought we got better offensively by taking good shots, executing, and uh, understanding time and score a little bit better. But uh, defensively, you know, I, I, we, we, in my opinion, just, just didn't get going that way, and we weren't solid defensively like I wanted to be. Obviously, the, the biggest change as you look from the beginning of the year to the end of the year is no Mark Yelovich, and we talked about that way back on our first show about uh, what that might do. Now as you have a chance to reflect how did that affect your team this year? Well, you know, uh, I thought it got us off to a, a, a poor start, a slow start, I should say, in the fact that, you know, you, you kind of build around uh, one of your better players. And, um, you know, he's out the picture. There goes, you know, some scoring. There goes some uh, rebounding uh, for us. Um, but I thought our guys adapted pretty well to it as we went along and, um, and never really focused on, you know, Mark being out. But uh, they just kept playing games. and. And uh, for the most part, I thought they were ready for most games. Had a chance to visit with David Borden uh, earlier in the week and ask uh -huh. him about the same thing. And he gave me a great answer. I thought it was an honest answer. He said, you know, it forced some guys to maybe do some things that they wouldn't have done if Mark was on the court. Do you feel that way as well? Well, it forced some guys to step up a lot sooner um, in the season than they, you know, than expected. Um, you know, guys like uh, Corey Wickware, um, guys like uh, Cornelius Chat. Um, guys like Kevin Steinman, even and um, and Nicola, I thought Nicola had a you know pretty good year, um, you know for us. So it forced guys to to grow up a little bit faster um, because you now you're not so focusing on on just Mark, you know being being carrying us. Now they have to by 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 a team they have to uh, try to get it done. Now you have three games left. I know obviously uh, from your standpoint and coach's standpoints, you want to finish strong. How mm -hmm. important is that to, to to finish strong out here? I think it's always uh, a good thing to uh, when you when you finish out the year on a positive note. You know, when you look at Division One basketball, um, there's only one team that's going to win their last game, and um, you know we're not yet into uh, postseason play. So for us to finish strong, we have that opportunity, you know, to to finish strong and win our last game of the year. And you know, when you're off for the spring and the summer, you know that 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 stick with you for a long time. And I think you know finishing strong help build confidence for, for next year um, and, and so it's so important for us to you know down the stretch um, you know we had four games left and I we had a team meeting and I talked to our guys about being locked in for the next you know two and a half weeks uh, be locked in for the next four games uh, well you know yes we played uh, uh, Robert Morris but I thought our guys did a great job uh, being prepared uh, attitude was great as far as um, getting out there and playing now one game's down. We got three more to go. I wanted to see us take those steps forward to finish on a positive note. And frankly, just uh, walking around here and, and, and seeing you guys in the gym and, and seeing guys still coming in and getting that individual work uh, aside from just your team practices, it seems like to me the guys have taken that to heart and they want to finish strong. They, they do. And um, you know, from a staff standpoint, is it's always coaching for tomorrow. And and from a player standpoint, is also doing that too. You know, it's it's just a matter of continuing to to build to grow never feel satisfied and keep working to get better as a team uh, as you look forward to next year since we are close to wrapping things up here on this year what kind of things uh, get you excited about next year obviously you've got the Ohio Valley Conference schedule coming up you'll get Mark Yelovich back what else uh, kind of excites you for the upcoming year well you know th those two things are uh, right now that that's the excitement of what we're looking forward to um, being in the OVC now we understand too that there's a lot, lot of work need to be done with recruiting and, and building, you know, on and off the floor. Um, but uh, you know, I haven't thought too much about next year. Um, yes, those are exciting things, um, but but I think the key right now is just to try to finish out the year on a on a positive note. Give folks an idea of what the schedule is like for you and the staff once the season wraps up. Uh, do you immediately? get into meetings and, and, and kind of look back and, and see where you need to go or is it right back on the recruiting trail? What, what's your schedule kind of like there? Well, you know, recruiting is something that, that you never um, take a day off from. It's, it's always, um, someone always told me this, re re recruiting is almost like 
having a cow, you always have to milk that cow every day, <laughs> you know, just like recruiting. You always have to, every day, there's, there's something going on. But after the season end, uh, we'll definitely be out on the road more than we have to. And we've been doing that throughout the whole, whole entire season, but we definitely will have to. Uh, we also have our camps, and then we have to go out um, AAU tournaments. So, you know, and, and also, uh, you know, helping our guys try to work with some of their, their weaknesses and also their strength during the off season as far as getting bigger, stronger, and uh, be able to do some things uh, better to improve basketball-wise fundamentally. So, you know, there's a lot to be done. It, it, it feels like it never stops, uh, which, you know, which I like that and, and, and working with our guys. It also give us a time here, you know, just to be with our guys a little bit more um, individually rather than from a team standpoint. Um, so, you know, there's a lot that goes on. Our schedule will continue to be busy, and um, you know, but working with our players is it, such a, a unbelievable thing, unbelievable feeling just to work with them and watch them grow on the basketball floor, but also watch them grow as a man and also academically. How much time do you get to spend with players in the spring and in the summer? Well, by NCAA rules, uh, we only get two hours of basketball in the spring until final starts, and then. Uh, uh, but they they all and they get six hours in in the weight room uh, to which they can do. So we have to use that those times wi wisely um, to help them develop and and give them things to where now because we can't do anything in the summer with them and and they're kind of on their own. So but give them things during the summer for them to improve as a as a basketball player. Coach, it's been uh, certainly my pleasure this year to be able to cover the team and, and spend some time with you here on the uh, Coach's Show. Thanks so much, as always, for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's Cougar Head Men's Coach Lennox Forrester. We'll take a break, come right back, and wrap things up here on the SIUE Coach's Show right here on CCIN. That'll do it for another edition of the SIUE Coaches Show. Thanks so much for joining us this time and all season long here on CCIN. Don't forget, lots to come here at SIUE during the spring, softball, baseball, and for all of that and all your Cougar news, don't forget to go to SIUECougars.com. Thanks so much to all the folks that have made it happen all season long here on CCIN, specifically Jeremy LeBrun and John Campbell. It's certainly been my pleasure. I'm Joe Pott. Thanks again for joining us all year long right here on CCIN. We'll see you next year on the SIUE Coaches Show.